Mics are hot. I'm waiting on you, Harry. Hey, hey. All right. Here we go. All right. Hi, Roberta. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. hey girl. <laughs> Long time no see. Long time. <laughs> Long time no see, my friend. Well, you know, it's, it's, let me just say, first of all, you are listening to the show on WNHH 103.5 FMLP. My name is Michelle Turner, and in the studio with me this evening is the one and only author right now, because that's the context we're putting her in, Roberta Hosky. Hey, Roberta. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> My new title still have to say, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Roberta yeah. held a very successful book launch this past Monday night. And I was fortunate in, I can't even say it. I'm talking so fast. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. And um, she she preached. She had a testimony. <laughs> she had her family in the house. She had the women of her millionaire mindset organization, yes. her sisterhood. Yes. And I think a lot of people got a lot out of it. Yes. Yeah. I, I The testimonies are just like pouring in. I couldn't keep up with them. I, I literally hired help to help me respond wow. today. Um, people were, um, they totally didn't expect what we gave them at mm. that book launch. Mm -hmm. And when we were, we were putting the book launch together, I, anyone knows me, I don't do dry. Right. Right. And, and I'm us I'm usually over the top. Were you at my wedding? You were at my yeah, wedding, I was right? at your wedding. Yeah. So I used to be like, <laughs> <laughs> like, they were like smoke and all this stuff at the wedding, like ridiculous, but that's just who I am. Went to the, went to the, went to the birthday party. Oh yeah. And the birthday party. Yes, and, yes. And, and the, and the, the backyard joint. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And you, you had have. lots of candy. Yes. Yeah. Rotten yeah. all our teeth. Yes. <laughs> The 80s party. Yes. Yes, so, yes. Yes. So I love events, but this particular event was very important to me. It's like um, the book launch. It was like a launch of a new, um, a new, not a new person, but a new part of me, a new, uh -huh. a new evolution of Roberta. Um, now, as you uh, just said, the author, I now have a new title um, attached to my name, but the, not just a title was more than that. Uh, I felt that this book, uh, deserved to be launched in a way where it was fabulous, right? Right, <laughs> it was. And, yes. and I told my team, I said, "Listen, I want to be this. This event has to look like Michelle Obama has to look like the O. <laughs> like I know I'm the R, <laughs> but it's got to be fabulous." <laughs> And it was. It was very nice. So very we, well done. Your team worked hard and it showed. Yes. And yes. so we had to, you know, we brought in um, the best and absolutely you were there and um, Gwen Edwards and just the team. Was yeah, she amazing. was fabulous. Yeah, the team was amazing. And most importantly, the people who attended, they did get a lot out of it. Uh, we talked a little bit about breaking the poverty curse. And that's uh, the title of the book. Yeah. And the poverty curse broke in a Roberta Hosky story. You said I was preaching. I don't know what we call it. I just call it talking with emotion. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were giving testimony. Yes, definitely giving yeah, testimony. Because there was a moment there when you had people. Well, there were several. Uh -huh. We had people on their feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? We went and, to church, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you did. All you needed was that organ. You know the organ oh. that they play? <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been shouting all over the place like, this is a book launch. <laughs> this is not church. <laughs> no, but it, it just actually speaks volumes to the to the story. So, in, you know, all jokes aside, and we could joke all day because yeah. that's our personalities. Yeah. But all jokes aside, that book, um, if you if you really read the book, and I know you've read it, it has um, such a power in my story of um, from poverty and the things that I went through in life that so many people can identify with, but they never want to talk about. Mm. And so um, it also there's liberation and being able to free to free to express those things that we like to keep suppressed inside of us. And because and that's the key word. Mm -hmm. Liberation is real big. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when you're free, you can free, you know, there's the term free to be me. 
And so um, many of us are bound and don't even realize why we're bound. Mm. But many of us are bound in our mindset because of childhood issues and because of things that happened to us years ago that we have suppressed over time. And then suppression, right? Mm -hmm. When we suppress things, whether we think we forgot about them or not, they surface in other areas of our life where here we are trying to do something and we can't understand why we have right. fear or why we're feeling insecure. It has everything to do with things that we never dealt with or didn't know how to deal with growing up in the in the energy around us. So liberation. And, and truth be told, that was one of the reasons why it took you a while to complete this book. Yes, it took me almost five years to do this book. So I will start writing. First of all, I didn't mean to write my life story, right? But I, what changed? <laughs> what changed? What had happened was. What had happened was. <laughs> so I didn't mean to write my life story at first, but I have these 21 um, day mindset cards to help change the mindset of people. Um, and I wrote those 21 mindset cards based off of my life. So my thought process is like my 21 day meditation cards and meditation mindset cards. Those things are selling like hotcakes. So mm. I'm like, if I get the cards are selling, then I think the other part that goes along with it is writing. So you have like, for example, day one says my name is, and then you fill in the blank and it says I'm destined for greatness. So my name is Roberta and I'm destined for greatness. So day one, you would say over and over, my name is Roberta. I'm destined for greatness. My name is Roberta. I'm destined for greatness. I believe mindset changes with repetition. Mm -hmm. So the thought process was to be able to write something and go along with each day. But every time I begin to write, I started talking about stuff that had was so deep. And then like I couldn't talk about destined for greatness without saying how it actually happened. happened. Yeah. And so before you knew it, I started talking about daddy issues. Then I started talking about mama issues. I was like, oh Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> I'm like crumbling up papers, throwing it out. And I was rebuking the devil. <laughs> And then finally I gave and I realized what I needed to do is me. I needed to face my own fear and face my own insecurities and, and face those things that I swept underneath the rug and that I was trying to act like never happened to me. And I realized that in that moment, because I didn't deal with suppression issues that I was having mindset issues and I don't do the mindset issue mm. stuff. So I had to be able to. So it was therapeutic. It was for you. very therapeutic. That's why I cried 90 percent of the time. So um, 90% of the time I cried, but I realized that as it was therapeutic for me, that I had to be transparent because in me being transparent, I know that would create liberty and freedom for others as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was big. It was huge. So when you, when you finally did finish the book, mm -hmm. was, was there a big edit process? Cause Oh, there are a geez. lot of there are a lot of things that usually go in the book, and then once you put it down for a few days and you come back to it, you mm -hmm. say, "I don't know if I want to say that," mm -hmm. or "I think this doesn't really make a difference, but this does." Mm -hmm. so, so there was a lot of editing, and that is not my strong point. Um, we went back and forth, back and forth. I even sent it back. Again, is even though it's out, there's some edits that need to be made. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a lot that was that was done there's a lot of cliffhangers in there yeah in that book but that was by design okay so, <laughs> so we got a part two coming yes there's definitely a part two coming <laughs> so, so is it going to take another five years it is not going to take another five <laughs> years not at all i just gotta take my breath and just <sighs> and breathe in. and breathe and i'm breathe working in. with um some people um producers on what i should releasing the book and what I should be saving for the other thing I got going on. Okay. That sounds like a movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, why you got just Michelle? <laughs> Michelle. Just me. You know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm seeing it, but yeah, just my, that's so, just my assessment. Uh, yeah. So I actually, I signed a contract for a movie for this book. I actually um, signed a contract. That's why I've been going back and forth to LA. Okay. So I signed a, mo a contract um, with the, for the movie for the book before the book came out. So I was in L.A. doing my TED Talk. And, when and I, I saw that and I wanted to talk to you about that. So go ahead. Yeah, so I was doing a <laughs> TED Talk. And in the TED Talk, I talked a little bit about my story. And um, one of the people in the audience, I looked at her. and She had her mouth open like, like jaw dropping. And I'm just being me. And um, at the end, we ended up connecting. She was like, I don't know what it is about your energy. She was like, but I need to know more about you. And so she began to talk. She was like, what do you have? Like, do you have a book? What, what is going on? I was like, yeah, I have a book, but it's not published yet. And she's like, do you mind? And at first I'm like, you're a complete stranger. 
Right. Um, yes, I'm mine. It's my life. <laughs> like, who are you? And what's your last name? Like, I just got here in LA. I, right. I've never seen you a day in my life. But, um, but you know how you have that, that calm, that confirmation, like in your gut. And so yeah. I went with my energy Yeah. and, um, I went ahead and sent it over to her, of course, with confidentiality agreements with our attorneys. Mm-hmm. And within two weeks I had a contract. Wow. Um, to make it into, uh, um, a screen, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, it said in the newspaper says silver screen, but they call it another, a screenplay, a screenplay. Yeah. And mm-hmm. make it into a screenplay. Uh, they were going back and forth between a screenplay and um, a episodic. Okay. And yeah, so, like like a little like Netflix type thing, right? And yeah, like um, what was the um, what is the one? What's the ep- only show that I watched that was an episodic? Um, with come on, help me. Everybody was Empire. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so they were thinking about okay. doing an episodic, episodic similar to like Empire with my book, with my life. Wow. And um. But they decided the first one needs to be a screenplay and then maybe spin off be an episodic of the screenplay. So right now in L.A., there's a big storyboard going on. Um, so my- who's going to play Roberta Hosky? Listen, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but she better be cute. I said- <laughs> well, you, well, you have the right, you know, first right of refusal, don't you? Like, I nah, do. Not I her, do, but, it's, but it's me younger, right? Yeah. And not the, you know, it's just me younger. And, um. I don't know, but I older. I would love to see Gabrielle. Mm. Gabrielle, she would she would get me as the yeah. Business woman. And I think that's a good yeah. similar kind of looking person, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to see Gabby do it. Um, but you know, it's still in the making. That's why I didn't put it out so much out public. Except you over <laughs> here, just sorry. So yes, yes, yes. So yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so the book is published by T- Tri- Trilogy, which is owned by TBN, Trinity okay. Broadcasting Network, which mm-hmm. is the largest Christian um, network um, in the world. Yeah, they work with T.D. Jakes, Joe Olstein, Joyce Myers, and yours truly, Yay. Roberta Hosky, the girl from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> T.D. Jakes, Joyce, Joyce Myers, Joe Olstein, Roberta Hosky. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think I think it's a good combination. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So in doing this book, mm-hmm. I know you have some purposes. Yeah. Not only do you want to inspire people mm-hmm. and get them to realize their mode of freedom, if you will. Yes. But you talk about in the book, and this this is what one of the things that fascinated me about mm-hmm. the book. Besides you riding a bike, but I'm not going to get into <laughs> that. Because that, that, that was like, because like, I, I can never see you riding a bike, I was, a, I was also a tomboy. I used to play <laughs> marbles in the dirt. Like, I, there, you know, there has been an evolution, Michelle. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I get that. I understand that. But it's like, that just that just blew my mind. So, But that the you bike. have to read the book for that. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. My train of thought. Uh. You said the purpose, or but yeah. the prophecies. Oh, uh, mm, yeah, yeah. I think for me in reading the book that fascinated me mm-hmm. because I've always known you as a hard worker, mm-hmm. always, and you've always had good energy. Mm-hmm. But it seemed that there was always an energy around you that people saw that was about big things and mm-hmm. wealth mm-hmm. Then. Mm-hmm. and it took you a minute to catch on to that was it was it because because i i just can't believe that you didn't necessarily at a certain point not have the confidence in yourself but at the same time it's like i can also see you saying maybe there's something to it Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it, it's almost like in the book, everybody's telling you this, and you're like, "Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, uh-huh. it, oh, it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen." But you know, that's why I believe that um, God had to have people say over and over and over, just mm-hmm. like when we first started talking in this interview, I was talking about repetition right. and changes the mindset, right. and so I believe that the repetition of the prophecies and people saying, you know what, you're destined for greatness. You know what? You will be wealthy. The world will know your name and over and over that 
after a while, I began to believe it. And as a man think, if so is he, and if you can Mm -hmm. believe it, then you could really achieve it. So things started changing internally in my mindset. And, um, it, it came from that. Yeah. And always had it, no matter, you know, it was over here. You know how somebody tell you something like yeah. fashion in the back of your head. Yeah. Your so it was not in the forefront because I had so much trauma in the forefront. Mm-hmm. And that's how many of us are um, today is that uh, many of us have promises over our life and, and dreams and visions and things that we want to do. And maybe even have prophecies that people spoke things over your life that you received and you wanted to see it come to pass, but it has not come to pass yet. Um, but maybe you're focused so much on right now. Instead mm. of really taking that word and putting it from the back of your head to the front of your head. And that's mm-hmm. what ended up happening from the back of something that's suppressed to the front of something I'm going after. And when that thing happens, when you can say, you know what, this is my goal. I am going to be um, uh, I'm going to do voiceover. I am going to be known across the world. I am going to evolve from what people think I am, and I'm going to get a new title. Um, you start thinking like that, right? Uh-huh. And you're going to be the first person to do this. I'm going to be the first woman to do this. And when you start thinking like that, it becomes to the forefront of your thought process. And when that happens, then your actions align to manifest it. And so, as so long as you have it suppressed, right, it, you won't act on it. But the minute it comes up here, the minute you speak it and put it in the atmosphere and someone says to you, well, who are you and who are you going to be in 2020? Like, who's the new you? And you start speaking it and putting it in the atmosphere, it becomes to the front, and then you start manifesting. And so that that's just, it's a, um, a mindset thing. Yeah, it's a mindset. Mindset's and give your, give, your, give your acronym for DREAM. Yes, yes. So DREAM, all the preachers out there, you can use my acronym, just give me my credit. <laughs> so <laughs> we all have DREAMs. <laughs> you can yak it. You can use it. Just say Roberta Husky. Dream. D R E A M. D R E A M. The dream. I uh, believe that we're all given dreams. Dreams are D divinely. R revealed. E events. A awaiting. W um, M manifestation. D R E A M are divinely revealed events. Awaiting manifestation i believe that each and every one of us have divinely revealed events awaiting um and some of us are between awaiting and manifestation Mm -hmm. and that's where the shift happens between awaiting and manifestation Mm -hmm. and so where was your shift was your shift when you left your job in new york or was it when you sat there with all those papers above you in your little metal desk, you and your sister. <laughs> well, I I don't know why I got this analogy in my head, but I'll go with it. So I had I drive a manual car. So I yes, I drive manual cars. I love it. Like shift one, shift yes. two. Yes. And so it wasn't like it was just one shift. It was I went to first <laughs> gear. Mm-hmm. Then I went to second gear. Then I went to third gear. Then I went into fourth gear. Then I went to fifth gear. So I kept shifting. And actually what happened on Monday was another shift. Okay. So I, it kept shifting. There are certain things in my life that just keep shifting to keep going to wherever the next level is in life. Wherever that next level is. Mm-hmm. And so when you start to talk about mm-hmm. the poverty curse. Poverty curse, yeah. Do people believe it? Do people? Because I mean, again, that's a mindset. Do people believe in a poverty curse? Hmm. I think me saying it. And or put, put it put it this way. When you say it, mm-hmm. what is the reaction that you get? That's hmm. a better question. Well, well, I'm going to answer that two part. First okay. part, do people believe in a poverty curse? I think people don't even know or have. <laughs> process that it's a possibility that this could be a poverty curse until someone plants the seed Mm -hmm. and say the poverty curse because you may not even heard that terminology right and so when someone brings it to you or when someone plants the seed it's up to you to receive it or reject it but if it starts making sense at some point you have to receive it so some people do some people don't it's up to them i know what worked for me yeah so um when I speak about it, I think I have not had one person for me say, I don't believe in what you're saying because I begin to break down it, break down with the poverty curse. And even in the book, I start talking about generational poverty mm-hmm. 
And so if you really start looking at your life, you look at your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, and you start looking at your life and looking at what has happened on every single level or of your of your history. And then you see you repeating it. Don't we see something wrong with this? Mm -hmm. If everybody in your in your family have been broke, if everybody in your family have been living in the projects at one point, 22 members of my family members were in the same projects, like 22 of them. What is going on? My grandmother's across the street. Like, oh, what the heck? Yeah. All yeah. Of us. But that was our normal. But if you start looking and looking at these behaviors, even teenage pregnancy, I talk about that in a mm -hmm. book, how my grand great grandmother, teenager, when having a baby, my <laughs> grandmother was a teenager, had my mother when she was a baby, welfare. My mother had my brother when she was a teenager, welfare. My sister had my nephew when she was a teenager, welfare. I got pregnant with my son. What did my mother tell me to do? Get on welfare. So is that generational poverty? 17. So that generational poverty for, but what I realize is poverty is also a mindset. You could, you can, you can, yeah. you can agree with me or not. I believe poverty is a mindset and it's passed on for generation to generation to generation. See, my mother passed on poverty to me because she didn't know prosperity. Mm. So if you don't know prosperity and if you don't know how to create wealth, if you don't know how to make millions, billions, if you don't know how to sign your own paycheck and the only thing you know is to 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 go to work and work and slave for somebody else. If the only thing you know is how to to pay a bill and 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 um, work from nine to five and let somebody tell you what to do, then that's all you can give out. So by default, if you don't know prosperity, if you don't know wealth, by default, mm -hmm. you teach po poverty. By default, you just teach it. And so it's cyclical. And so it goes from generation to generation to generation. Today, me and my husband were talking and we were talking about the teenage pregnancy. I got one daughter and it did not happen with her. Mm -hmm. No teenage pregnancy. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm excited. I'm God, I thank you. But it is generational. Poverty is passed on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. Just like wealth. Wealth, wealth is passed on thing. from one yeah. generation to the next generation yeah. to the next generation. But if we don't know wealth by default, we teach in everybody and everything around us poverty because we can only give what we have inside of us. So are you still trying to teach wealth? Because I know at one point you were going around the country kind mm -hmm. of standing on soap boxes in Newark. I was having fun. With a, yeah. Yeah. With that bullhorn saying, yeah. you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, you know, I'm still a girl from the hood. I will get on the corner with my stilettos. <laughs> Um, um, but I'm a little bit refined right now. So I don't think I'm gonna do it in 2020. I got a doctor, Roberta Husky, uh -huh. but um, I'll still get on the soap boxes and all that. I'm just if playing. need be, if need be, I have no shame in my game. But yes, I'm still preaching and teaching the same thing I have always preached and teach for as long as I can remember. I've always been this way. I've always, whether it's on a larger playing field, more people hear about it, being more bold. But you and I have one on one conversations years ago mm -hmm. and I've been saying and doing the same thing yep. forever. Yep. This is nothing new. I'll say it in a Well, it's it's interesting to me too, because I it made sense in the book, but you know <laughs> well, I, No, your love of houses. You yeah. know, when you were a little girl. And you know, we don't sometimes as human mm -hmm. beings, we don't necessarily connect those things with what we do as adults. Yeah. And you would go into a house and say, this should be here and this should be mm -hmm, here and, mm -hmm. and they should place this here. And mm -hmm. you're not talking furniture. No. You're talking about how the house is laid out. Absolutely. Where the chandelier would go, like where the toilet would go, where the, where the door, the closet would go. It came to me automatically. I knew how to read blueprints as a child. Like it was like ABC one, two, three for me. And so those are the things that I love to teach when I coach people, wealth mm -hmm. strategy, mindset strategy. You know, I, of course, I teach real estate strategy, but I want people to get to the core of who they are. Yeah. And because that's get, important. Yeah. And get to the core of who mm -hmm. you are really means peeling back layers. And really, who are you as a kid? What did you love to do as a kid before the world started telling you what you should be? Mm -hmm. You know, so if I knew then what I knew now, or if anyone around me would have thought, well, this is a little strange that this girl could read blueprints, right? This is a little strange that all she does is 
is draw houses and with steers. Like this is a little different here. And <laughs> instead of going to the park, she wants to sneak into a bandit houses. Like something <laughs> right here needs to connect. <laughs> and I went, so as a kid, I loved houses, but now it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And because hindsight, as they say, is 2020, I want to show the people that are reading my book to pay attention to those things that your children are showing you. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to them very young because you can help to guide them to who they are just on the things that they just naturally love to do. Yeah. Yeah. I I think about my daughter and how she is drawn Mm -hmm. to kids, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and it was so funny because we were in the grocery store. I tell the story all the time. Mm -hmm. We were in grocery store. And we're standing there trying to decide, okay, do we want this or do we? Mm-hmm. And this little girl runs up to her and uh-huh. hugs her. Oh. And she's like, um, honey, hi. <laughs> Where's your mommy? Because I don't want any problems. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but she genuinely, small children love her and she works well with them. Yeah. You know, so one of her, one of her talents mm-hmm. is that she can actually get kids to talk to her about whatever it is that's bothering them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, her her behavioral psych piece mm-hmm. that she wants to develop is something genuine. Yeah. And I would definitely um, support that that um, thing that's innate that's yeah. inside of her. Yeah. And I can almost promise you that if she sees a child hurt, it bothers her like insane. Well, it was funny. We were yeah. um, I was working. Mm-hmm. She was in high school. Mm-hmm. She got off the bus. Mm-hmm. She saw this kid. And she said, Ma, the kid looked lost. See? Somebody and she else would said, have walked by that kid. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And she said, Will you allow me to talk to you? Is her approach. Mm-hmm. Will you allow me to talk to you? And the little boy said, Yes. Mm-hmm. He said, I've been here 15 minutes. Nobody's answering Aww. the door. He said, And I, I don't have a phone and I don't know where anybody is. Okay. So she talked to him, figured out his aunt lived up the street. Okay. And he, she said, do you think she's going to be home? Mm-hmm. And so he said, I don't know. He said, sometimes she's home when I'm after school. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I go there. So she walked the little boy up the street. Uh-huh. And as she's walking him up the street, she said, use my phone. Call your aunt. Mm-hmm. See if she's home. Yep. So he did that. And then she got on the phone. She said, hi. She told the lady who she was mm-hmm. and said, I saw him standing there and he looked really frustrated. Aww. She said, so I'm just helping to get him to your house. Mm -hmm. And then she says, I got to hang up and I got to call my mom because my mom's going to be wondering why I'm not home. And so she called me and told me what happened. And I was like, oh, yeah, those are the things. So those those are the things, you know, things that we need to focus on is those things that just we just automatically do. Those are the things. And so when I teach purpose and I teach people to tap into their purpose, because if you tap into your purpose, you will find your passion. Mm -hmm. And when you find your purpose and your passion, your prosperity is attached to it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people look for prosperity first and that's the wrong way. And it's backwards. It's backwards. You look for um, what, what is that passion? What is that thing? What's the passion? What are you passionate about? It's tied into your purpose. So I, when I coach people about that, I often say, what is one, there's two things. What is that thing that you would do if nobody paid you to do? Mm Mm-hmm. Because that is the indicator of, um, you know, your, your passion. That's mm-hmm. what, are, what are you just doing just mm-hmm. because it was not about money? Right. And then the other question that I ask people when I'm coaching them is, what is the thing that grieves you? What is that thing that just, when it happens, it just gets under your skin? And you can't explain why it gets under your skin. Like, why does that make you upset? Why is that your Achilles heel? Why is that thing that just, ugh, like everybody has that mm-hmm. ugh thing about them? For me... Um, the thing that just strikes an emotional chord. And for me, it's always been homelessness. So see, mm-hmm. now here we go back as a kid. So I can, I would remember being a kid and we're riding down the street and you have a homeless person and they have a sign talking about they're homeless. I'm hyperventilating crying. Everybody else just acting normal. I'm looking around <laughs> like, what's wrong with them? Like, why are that they you are reacting see? to this? Yeah, I'm like a wreck. Like, oh, my God, don't you see this guy? He has no shoes on. He's on the floor. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I was a wreck. But it grieved me. Mm-hmm. See, what grieves us, and a lot of times we're taught, oh, don't worry about it. Control your emotion. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Your emotion 
is trying to tell you who you are. Yeah. So control it. You need to pay attention to it. Understand why it's why is why it it's happening and why is it happening? See, it grieved me when I saw homeless people. And the reason why I asked, what is that thing to grieve you? Is because the thing that grieves you is the indicator of something that God designed you to fix. Mm. You didn't give yourself that emotion. I don't. What? Why do I care about homeless people? I didn't give that to me. Right. I didn't give myself the ability to read blueprints when I was a kid before I could read books. I read blueprints before books. I didn't do that to me. And what's inside of you? Mm-hmm. And so we really, really miss it. We really miss it with the children growing up and and really tapping into what is really inside of them because that that will save us a lot of time wasting money on school right. listening to what what do you want to be what do you want to be like you're going to define what you really want to be when you really sh- will never be happy until you really tap into your purpose like you can like i was making six figures after being on welfare you would think i was satisfied i was mm-hmm. not happy because that's not who i was destined to become it was a step along the way yeah it's part but of the journey. Was, that wasn't my, my, oh, I got my six-figure job. I got a chauffeur. I was on welfare, and I own some homes. I'm good. I'm satisfied. What is satisfied? I ain't satisfied. I'll never be satisfied. Unless God <laughs> tell me to at some point, but he ain't tell me to, so I'm going to just keep on going. <laughs> just keep on going. So, yeah. so tying that into the TED Talk, mm. how did the TED Talk happen, and what did you talk about? So TED Talk, and you can probably uh <laughs> This, I'm consistent. <laughs> I promise you I'm consistent. Um, the TED Talk uh, talked about poverty. Mm. And I talked about the homeless rate in um, L.A. But I tied the... Yeah, because it's huge. Oh, my God. It's awful. It's that, huge. I can't recall the numbers um, of the homeless rate in, in L.A. But um, I did I had all the data. Mm-hmm. But I talked and I shared the story. So I did the TED Talk like a story. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's very good. But it started off with, with saying something like, have you ever seen a homeless person? Have you ever walked by a homeless person pushing a carriage? Hmm. You know, the, maybe in the alleyway. So I started painting a picture of looking at homeless people. And, you know, did you walk by them? And have mm-hmm. you ever considered why they are the way they are? Mm-hmm. And I begin to paint that type of picture. Um, And then I started talking about the stereotypes that people put on homeless people. And then um, at the end, I was talking about it. And I said, you know, um, you never know where a homeless person will really end up not to judge them because they may even end up on the stage that you're watching right now because that homeless person at one time was me. And the crowd was like, (laughs) ah. But it was I'm consistent with poverty, breaking the poverty curse, homelessness, women's right, being financially free, um, uh, bridging the economic gap. Mm -hmm. Um, I've I've been consistent. Money, wealth, um, prosperity. So even that God gives you the power to get the wealth. What is your recommendation for bridging the gap? Um, Well, here's the thing. A lot of people get paid on a, a hourly rate or mm-hmm. a salary, and you can have two people, ten people, twenty people, a hundred people doesn't matter, all in one company, and you'll have different salary lines, right? Right. And so you can have someone doing the same job as you in the same office as you, using the same computer, same software, same time from nine to five as you. One person would be cut, get paid more than the other person. So what I like to teach is that. You don't necessarily get paid for your time. So let's first get rid of that myth in your mindset. You don't get paid for your time. Because if you really got paid for your time and got paid by the hour, well, you could just sit home and your little $20 and keep popping right. out your seat or your $30, your three ten dollars bill, your $4, $10 bill, right. whatever you get paid an hour, keep popping up if you really get paid by the hour. You don't get paid by the hour. You get paid for the value you bring to the company. And so as you become more valuable, then you're able to charge more to build that gap, to bridge that gap. You can't not invest in your own intellectual property and think you are going to advance. It just does not work that way. If you cannot um, not invest into your own intellectual property and think that you're going to become a millionaire, 
there is going to be a process that you have to invest in your own thought mm-hmm. process, your skill set to make yourself become more valuable. And I use the example like 10 years ago, if I was to do real estate coaching, and I think I did. If yeah. I mean, maybe five years ago, I was doing these $25 show up at my office. Yes. I I'm going to connect with Roberta right now. Yes. <laughs> it's $375 <laughs> for 15 minutes. And my coaching packages go all the way up to thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I became more valuable with yeah. my intellectual property. I can help people create wealth. I've I've mastered this gift that God has given me, so I became more valuable. And so, depending on what you need me to do, like today, I was sharing with you with the speaking engagements that all came in today. I got a speaking engagement with in London. Well, that had some commas in it. I became more valuable. Mm-hmm. I'm the same person. But I started investing in my own intellectual property, mastering my gift, living in purpose and on purpose and giving God something to work with. You become more valuable. So that's how you bridge the gaps. I won't compare yourself with anyone else. Right. Just focus on who you are and what do you have to give to this world that makes you valuable. And whatever that thing you want to do, just master it. Well, I think I I believe. Everyone's born with a gift. Absolutely. They do. Absolutely. Everyone is born with a gift. With, in gifts, plural. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's it's tapping into it. It's discovering it. It's being encouraged in it. Oh, that- Michelle, you're going to make me go mindset, honey. <laughs> it's not discovering it because it's not, it's not lost. But but you don't know about it. So what do you do? Well, you know about it. You might have um, might have not paid attention to it. We just talked about the little girl, right? Yes. I knew that I, that was in me. I didn't pay attention to it. See, what happens is this is why the Bible say be as little children. Mm. Because what happens is as little children, we're very impressionable. And as little children, we just like stuff. We do stuff when we're just trying to figure out, you know, just having fun. But there's so many, so much about us as children about who we are to be as adults. But then you have adults start trying to tell you who you're going to be. Yeah. And then you have adults start putting boundaries on you. Oh, don't touch this. Don't touch that. Don't go here. Somebody going to get you here. Don't do that. Little kids be quiet. Kids are meant to be seen. I heard all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. After a while, you start getting your fear factor because we deal with fears as adults. Yeah. Of making a mistake because I don't know if I should do that. I don't know if I should do this. And I don't know if I should do that right. because our whole life, somebody had been telling us what to do, what was wrong and what was right. And so now we're trying to make a decision. We're trying to live. We're trying to be who we are. And we don't know if it's wrong or right. And it's inside of us. So it's so multi-layered. Mm-hmm. It's about going back to the essence of who you are. And I really say, answer those two questions. What is it that you would love to do? What is that thing that you would do if nobody was give if you were not getting paid? And what is the thing that grieve you? You probably hate bad radio. Like it probably makes you <laughs> sick. Am I right or am, am I right or am I right? You're right. Uh, hello. You're right. It grieves you. Yes. I could listen to bad radio. I don't care. Don't grieve me. But don't mess up a real estate deal and start talking <laughs> crazy. And don't start giving me mindset stuff and trying to tell me what you can't do. Now that right there is a problem. That grieves me. You could have had a whole conversation with somebody else about what somebody can't do. And then you could have a conversation for me. It grieves me. Pay attention to what grieves you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you all don't know, but I'm getting a lecture in this <laughs> right now. Because she's oh. giving me the side eye. Now that's my girl. That's all in love. love yeah, love. it is. It is all in love because we've been doing this thing for a while. Yes, we have. We really have. Yeah. Um. But when you, well, first of all, mm-hmm. let me roll it back a little teeny bit. And can you give us a little bit of history? Because you know, I know you're the chieftain. I know you're the founder. Mm-hmm. But you have an organization that is an international sisterhood. I do. Look at that. Look at God. Ain't he amazing? He is something. Oh, yeah. And you just got back from <laughs> putting folks together <laughs> yeah. out of the United States. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood. Yes. Uh, my Facebook Live have all the sisterhood going crazy right now. <laughs> They're looking at all those little sisterhood logos going up. Um, <laughs> yes. Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood. Faith-based sisterhood devoted to breaking what we call the poverty curse. Um, we live in purpose, on purpose. Uh, we are women who change generations, build mm-hmm. legacies and create wealth, um, not just for ourselves, but also for our children, um, generational wealth. 
Million of My Sisterhood was um, established uh, April 15, 2017. It was founded October 29, 2016. And um, it was something that I uh, believe, uh, again, is something that I believe that God allowed me to live to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movement, this sisterhood is not a business organization um, as my other businesses are, even, but it does have business structures in it. Um, it will outlive me. When I sat down at the table with the Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood and the um, in the cabinet, what you call the cabinet, mm-hmm. the first thing I said is, let's plan 100 years out. Wow. And so 100 years out, we plan this sisterhood. And what does it look like? What symbols? Like if 100 years out, we'll have how many sisters and how will we be able to recognize each other? How will we do things? See, yes, not yesterday, but on Monday, I said, excuse me, I'm just trying to change the world. I wasn't playing. I don't care if it sounds cute. I was dead serious. I'm trying to change the world. And what I do know is that when women are in as one, as when my people are one, that's when I will heal the lamb. What I do know is that there is power in unity. Yes. And I know that when women get together, we just get stuff done. Now, as you can get a group of women, you and I could get stuff done. The little group that we had at, on Monday at my um, book launch, they got that done. Yeah. Now imagine that multiply with women all across the world getting it done on one accord about breaking poverty, one accord investing yeah. together, yeah. one accord on, on saying, you know what, we're going to make sure our children and our children's children have wealth one accord of saying, you know, I'm tired of getting a paycheck. I want to sign my own paychecks. One accord of, Hmm. Being intentional how you spend your money. Mm-hmm. One accord of that being intentional about how you spend your money. You know, you have a sisterhood in my sisterhood. I'm going to spend my money in my sisterhood before I spend it outside of my sisterhood mm-hmm. because that's how the dollar circulates. Right. And so um, the sisterhood is a powerful force to be reckoned with. We are still very young. Um, I know there are a lot of wonderful, powerful sisterhoods out there, and I know you're you're part of them. And I have a lot of the sisters that are in my sisterhood that are other power. I mean, part of other uh, wonderful sisterhoods. Um, but this one right here is the package. We got faith. We got business. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got investment. We got I, I am my sister's keeper. We got community. And as um, one of the presidents in the New Jersey chapter says, we got the bundle package. <laughs> <laughs> the bundle package. <laughs> so, so, and Dominican Republic is what you talked about. Yeah. So we just launched our first country over the weekend. Um, Dominican Republic, they hablas no <laughs> English. They hablas only Espanol and no hablas Espanol. Um, but the power of the sisterhood and the power of God, um, being able to speak their language didn't even matter. Of course, I had translators that went along with me, but it was just a powerful thing to see these women, um, whom I never know, mm-hmm. but they heard about the sisterhood. The sisterhood was introduced to them and they were ready. I had one woman get in a bus for four hours mm. to come. And meet with me in the in the Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood in Dominican Republic after working. And a lot of times in the United States, we have excuses about what we cannot do. Yeah. And the question is always, how bad do you want it? And so it was powerful. That sisterhood was, that rising um, was very powerful. How, did you see the video? I saw the video. Yeah. Yes. What was your thought on it? I was impressed. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that these women don't necessarily have any connection to the United States. Mm. They don't speak any English, <laughs> you know, but they were really ready. They were. Yeah. Right. And of course I can't have everything on video. I did right, like a, right. a less than a minute clip. In. But when we talk about changing the world, like I'm so serious, like I changed the world one country at a time and mm-hmm. it will continue to grow because those women in Dominican Republic, I already have one opened up a door in Cuba. And so they're going to keep on opening wow. up doors all over the place. I already have the door in Kenya open. I talked about that. A door in Jamaica is already open. Bermuda was supposed to be the first one that was risen. So we have these countries already opening up their doors because it is necessary that we work together. I think um, being fake and phony is played out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. need that energy. That I mean, positive energy is the way to go. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we're moving in an age of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and it's it's about the uplift of everyone, but Absolutely. specifically women looking out for women and being serious about that. The last becoming first. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So Roberta Hosky, Dr. Yeah. Hosky. Uh, pumpkin. <laughs> Auntie Pumpkin. Auntie Pumpkin. Oh, my Auntie nephews. Punky. They, they were, if you guys weren't in the VIP, you don't know what she's talking about with Auntie Pumpkin. But the VIP session, they was dogging me in VIP. <laughs> They was dogging me. I was like, I still don't remember that pot of whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm not fessing up to that. So you're not owning it, <laughs> I'm right? not owning it. My daddy might have cooked that mess. I ain't cooking that But it mess. wasn't for me. <laughs> it was, and no. I ain't owning it. No, I ain't owning it. <laughs> <laughs> That's VIP talk, y'all. <laughs> the reception. <laughs> what is it? And I asked you this mm-hmm. Monday night. Yep. And, and, and wait, before I do that. Uh-huh. Numbers. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Numbers, All numbers, right. numbers. So let me see if I remember everything because <laughs> I had it written down before. Yes. Give me the numbers. What's numbers? $9.14. Is the salary that I made at Yale when I bought my first house. Yes. $9.14. Yeah. 283 283 Norton Street. The first house that I bought that yielded <laughs> me over a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> come on. Come on. I'm 1500 right. Was the cash flow after the after the debt service was paid on two eighty three North Street on a monthly basis, whether I sat my behind home or not. <laughs> and last but not least, four hundred seventeen. My welfare check. Woo! <laughs> I, I have fun playing that game until you switch the numbers. <laughs> I'm a numbers. I know my numbers. Well, you know, the funny thing about it was, I was like, you know, I bet she doesn't realize that in this story, there are significant numbers. No, I didn't. I didn't until you pulled them out. I'm going to start writing them. And and it was like, okay, so this is this number is the beginning. Mm-hmm. The 417. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the beginning. The 283 is the middle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And the fifteen hundred is the opening of a door. Yes. Oh, Michelle, high five. <laughs> Woo. Yes. Yes. So I figured that, you know, they were significant and were... people needed to know that those numbers were significant to you. Excellent catch. So, Excellent. you know, I I thought it was cool. And I, and I figured that, you know, even though it's like, <laughs> what? I said, Roberta, you're a numbers person. You mm-hmm. got this. Yeah. You like, I got the yeah, numbers. Okay. But that was hilarious when you had <laughs> shifted the numbers. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, what is it that you want people to take away from all of this? What is it that you want people to understand about your story? I want people to understand about my story is that I am them. Like, mm. uh, nobody special um, that it is possible, whatever that it is in life that if you really believe and you have the mindset Mm -hmm. and and really identify those things that's stopping you from being the best version of yourself stopping you from living in your abundance stopping you from um acquiring wealth creating generational wealth um living in peace living in happiness living in authentically who you are designed to be um that you can do it that whatever that it is it is possible there is nothing there are no limits in this world except the limits that you put on yourself there's no limits that's why there, there, there's there's no limits if you really think of there's no, nothing you can't do and if you look at um if you look outside and you've seen or you've seen other people you've seen oprah obama yeah. Yeah. if they've done it so can you i happened to read the new haven register article that was done on me the other day which was wonderfully done mm. Um, they quoted that because they asked me, you know, what do you tell people? And I was like, well, just look around. It's been done before. Yeah. So they can do it. You can do it. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. Nothing. Right. What's make you different from them? You may have to push a little harder, but, but you can do it. Yeah. yeah. It can be done. It can be done. So to sum it up, whatever that it is, it is possible. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. <laughs> that simple. You heard it first. <laughs> Author of The Poverty Curse Broken. Yes. Real estate investor. Mm-hmm. Real estate owner. Mm-hmm. Manager 
founder of Outreach Properties Mm -hmm. or Outreach Realty. Outreach Realty, yep. Dr. Roberta Hosky, thank you. Thank you very much. And Appreciate if, you coming on. Thank you. And if I want my wanna... movie premiere ticket, I'm telling you now. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. And I and me. I want one trip to the set. Mm-hmm. I'll pay for my ticket to get to wherever, but <laughs> I just want to be on the set when they shoot it. I promise you, if I will let you know. Please let, let me you know. know. I will let you know. It's still in beginning, beginning phases, so <laughs> I will let you know. And if anyone has not purchased this book yet, make sure. How can you they get it? Go ahead. You can get it on. Uh, just go to Amazon. Amazon.com has it. Um, Barnes and Noble has it. But if you want to autograph one with my signature, then you're going to have to go to www connect with roberta.com connect with roberta.com or i'm sorry i have a new site oh excuse the roberta hosky story.com uh, i'm sorry <laughs> roberta hosky story.com one more time roberta, roberta hosky story.com <laughs> and you will get your autograph copy <laughs> thank you you Michelle. are listening to the show on wnhhlp 103.5 fm broadcasting live from downtown new haven we're streaming live on TuneIn Radio and NewHavenIndependent.org. We're also streaming live video on Facebook Live right now. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash New Haven Independent or just go to your own Facebook page and look us up. Dr. Hosky, thank you. Appreciate thank you your time so and energy. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> Woo! All right, high five. High five, girl. We did it. Yes, you're awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's always good. Always. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, RobertaHoskyStory.com. Oh, look at you guys posting the, the links. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Make sure you get your book if you have not gotten a book already. Poverty Curse is Broken, the Roberta Hosky Story, Amazon.com also. But we want you to go to RobertaHoskyStory.com. RobertaHoskyStory.com. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Know that it is possible, whatever that it is in your life, that it it is possible. May the poverty curse be broken. Love you all. Bye, guys. RobertaHoskyStory.com. Get your book now.